Welcome to Auditory Precision, and today I'm going to go over bone masking. I made a bone masking video, but sadly said okay about 70 times in the office, so I'm going to do another one and hopefully it not be as annoying. Um, the first thing is uh, I'll make a simplistic audiogram just to try to get the point across, and let's say this is 20 decibels, so this and above is normal. And let's say that I'm going to plot my left uh, ear, and my left ear is a flat hearing loss, and we'll say that it is at 30 decibels across. My right ear, however, let's say it's more of a sloping hearing loss. Now here I can say that I have a flat hearing loss in the left ear and a sloping in the right, but I can't deem if either one is conductive, mixed, or sensory neural without placing or doing my bone conduction. Now let's say I start doing bone conduction on my right ear. And let's go ahead and figure out when I need to mask. Now, as long as my bone conduction will be right on point with my air or give me a gap of five to 10, I'm okay. However, 15 decibel gap or more, I will need to mask. So a 15 decibel air bone gap will require me to mask for bone. Um, you should not get bone to be less than air. Usually when that takes place, it's in the lower frequencies because the oscillator is not in the correct spot. There is some rare conditions like Paget's disease where you'll see that, but for the most part, your bone conduction should always be um, right at air or better than air. So let's go over this and say that here I have a 15 decibel gap, and then here I have a 20 decibel gap. So the first thing is that just like with speech, and just like with air, we're going to add 10 to our non-test ear to start our masking up. And here at bone, it's no different. So I'm at 30, and I'm going to add 10 no matter what. Now, IHS has implemented uh, an occlusion effect chart, which states that at 250, I'm also going to add 15, at 515, at 1010, and at 2000 and 4000, I won't be adding anything extra. Now, let's say here I'm at 500 hertz. I have a 15 decibel gap I need to mask. I'm going to uh, mask at 30 decibels in my non-test ear, which is my left. And I'm going to add 10 no matter what. I go over to my occlusion effect chart and see that I also have to add 15, which will bring me to 55. So I'm going to start with presenting 55 decibels into the left ear to mask. And let's say at 1,000, I'm good. This is a gap of only five decibels. At 2,000, I'm good. At 4,000, I have 20 decibel gap, so I'll need to mask. And to do my math over again, my left ear is at 30. I add 10 no matter what, and our occlusion effect chart says zero. So this is only 40, and I'm going to start with 40 decibels of narrow band noise, which is my masking noise, into my left ear. Now, in the videos for speech, air, and here at bone, this is our starting point for masking, and this is how we figure out where we need to start. Even though that might be sufficient, we'll never know that without running a plateau method to figure out that our masking is actually doing what it should. And so if you look, I do have a plateau masking video that goes over uh, air masking. However, that same method will be done on bone and even speech. So even though here, what we need to know is that at 15 decibel gap, I'm going to have to mask if it's 15 or more. And the most important thing is that if I have a 15 or more decibel gap at 
500, 1,000, and 2,000, that is a medical referral. It has to be at all three. If it's just that two, we can move forward, but if I have it at three, that's a medical referral. And then know that we need to add 10 to our non-test year plus whatever the occlusion effect chart asks us to. And then from there, to practice effective masking, we're going to be um, following the plateau method from there to make sure that we're masking properly.